Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and welcome to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time we take a look at a creepypasta simply known as Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Hacked Cartridge. Maybe a generic title, but ladies and gentlemen, I assure you that this is no generic creepypasta. Well, I'm not going to spoil that for you anyways, but keep your quality expectations where they are. What's going to happen in this Sonic the Hedgehog creepypasta? Well, one thing's for sure, somebody is going to go very fast, and there may be some spook intended. That being said, this is Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Hacked Cartridge, so sit back, relax, and let's see what our blue hedgehog has to deal with in this creepypasta. So before I tell you the story, let me clarify a few things. My friend and I are fans of Sonic the Hedgehog, well, big enough to know a little more about the franchise and some of the more low-core fans, but not enough to own every single Sonic the Hedgehog-related item and know every single thing about it. For the most part, my friend and I read the comics, have seen some of the shows, and occasionally looked up some info on our favorite characters on the several wikis on the web. Die Hard? No. Fans? Yeah. My friend, however, grew up in one of those super strict religious households that wouldn't let him or any of his siblings play video games at all. My friend had to negotiate for hours just to look up a few wiki articles on the computer or watch a few of the shows on the TV. Earthly things are the work of the devil himself, they said. Cursing their own cell phones. But he could absolutely not play any of the games, not at his house anyways. Rather, not while his parents were in his immediate space. The only time he got to experience the games was when he came over to my house, after school, or sometimes on the weekends where he wasn't being hauled to church or whatever other function his parents were a part of. We had a lot of fun when we did play games together. However, we never fully finished any games we played, Sonic related or otherwise. So, how did it all happen? Said friend got accepted into some college in Europe some months ago thanks to some year-long insomnia-induced socialization-killing studying, and he was, and I quote, feeling very nostalgic. He called me up one day as I was finishing up some computer game and he was packing the stuff and prepping for his new adventures in Europe. This very talkative and easily excited friend talked my ear off and bugged me to death about getting together to play a certain Sonic game from our youth. His pestering and purposely calculated bush beating eventually made me cave when we finally arranged a playdate and decided on our our game of choice. Our game of choice was Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles. My friend saw me play this game once a long time ago, but he only saw mere seconds of it before having to go home. I remember his uncontrollable excitement as I zoomed through the stages as hypersonic, bashing enemies to a poof with little to no effort thanks to the glowing and shining double image sprite. My friend was dying to play it and complete it since the very moment he laid eyes on it. He wanted to do so with me before he went away for some four years plus. I remember sighing to myself after we ended the call. I wouldn't have been bothered by any other Sonic game, but the thing is is that I had played this game so many times as a child that just hearing its name drove me to some type of nostalgic insanity, like singing your favorite song over and over until you dread ever hearing its melodic patterns ever again. I knew this game's distinctive and long story, I knew the game's once cool tiny secrets, I got all the game's endings, and well, long story short, I knew this game inside and out. I thought of playing it again for the sake of nostalgia, no, honestly it just seemed like a complete chore. But I agreed to it, and I'd have to stick through it to the end for the sake of my friend. Life, nature, and irony struck after the day of the phone call. The week before the playdate was absolutely chaotic. For whatever reason, life threw random, unnecessary, and just plain weird shit at me every chance it could find. For example, a raven cracked my windshield, then proceeded to poop all over it. I woke up early and cranky on the day of our playdate and realized that I no longer had my Sonic and & Knuckles in 2 cartridge required to play Sonic & 3. About several months ago, after what I hoped to be my last and final playthrough of the game, my younger brother decided it would be a great idea to fuck with their big sister and give both copies a bath. This left me with nothing but accurate memories of its completion and a now very dusty interlocking cartridge that made Sonic 3 possible for the Sega Genesis. I all but fly out of bed, hurried into my raven phobic car, and drove thrift store to thrift store to find uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic and Knuckles. It took half the day to find the copies of the game, both were in different stores in two different and very distant parts of town, the prices for the games varied. Sonic the, you know, SDK was about $8 with minor scratches, and the other, which was also slightly scratched, got haggled down to $10 and a coupon for a free coffee from a shop I generally haunted before and after work. Both copies were, of course, used, and both the guys who sold it to me said that the copies looked and worked fine. As skeptical as I was of their promises, I really didn't have the time to check if what they were saying was true. I ran back to my car and rushed back to my apartment as soon as, well, I had the keys in the ignition. In retrospect, that was the dumbest thing I could have done. 
My friend arrived not seconds after I walked back into my apartment. He made this apparent by knocking on my door and ringing my doorbell in a very rapid, continuous, and annoying fashion. He was so frickin' excited about playing this game that he made kids at Disneyland look hopelessly bored, if not helplessly lethargic. He all but flew through the door like a too strong blizzard wind, and whilst bouncing endlessly, tugs me into my living room, his mouth yammering questions at the speed of light. I sighed and prepared for the evening by quickly dusting off my trooper of a Sega Genesis, interlocking Sonic and Sonic 2 to get Sonic 3. Hooking up the system to the TV and then finally turning on the game. The Sega logo and voice chorus popped up following by the 3D Sonic that had spun himself into a title screen. The little blue hedgehog shook his finger back and forth and winked whilst giving us the signature half smile while tails flew in the background in the tornado over the blue seas, blue skies, and blue mountains. My friend cooed as we came to the data select after the title screen and picked the new file with both Sonic and Tails striking a pose beneath the new box. I picked up the second controller explaining to my friend how I can be Tails. Then I instructed him to begin the game. As soon as the intro cutscene began, my eyes grew wide with irritation and disbelief. This was not the game I played repeatedly as a child. Tails and the tornado plane were completely absent. Sonic was already in his golden super form and flying on the water by itself, and the color scheme of the sky, clouds, and waters were greenish instead of its rich blue color. The music was also different, not slow, not fast, but different, like a chiptune incorporated remix. The intro also went much quicker than it originally did, as if someone fast forwarded to the scene with Knuckles. Knuckles, instead of jumping from the ground and knocking Sonic backwards, only stood still and faced the direction in which Sonic came. Sonic's animation did as it should have when he bumped into Knuckles, flying backwards and blinking before landing on the ground. Sonic, however, dropped no emeralds upon landing. Knuckles, after a beat, finally left the scene and the gameplay began with the Angel Island Zone 1 Act 1 displayed in its mega annoying font. I felt panic and anger crash through me like a hurricane. One or both of the games I purchased was hacked, gently used my honey-coated ass. I was just about to stand from the floor to get my cell phone before my very excited friend boomed again in excitement. I only, I only stopped myself and remembered that my friend had never had the joy of experiences his game and will only have the chance that afternoon. Even if the game was hacked, this friend's excitement and ignorance kept me from ruining this precious time we had together. I put down my cell phone and got back to the living room, biting back my seething rage. When I look back to the screen, I see Sonic running through the zone by himself, no tails. I know for a fact that my friend didn't reset the game and chose the Sonic-only story. And I also know for a fact that we were going for the true ending, so we needed tails. Yet, despite us picking this option, he was nowhere to be found on the screen. I felt my rage coming back before silencing it once again. Besides this not-so-tiny factor in the remix music and the greenish color scheme, the game played like a normal one-player game. <sighs> my friend... I had to guide my friend through the level to the first ring under the cliff in the first part of the level. My friend gets Sonic to spin dash into the rocks and jump into the magic ring. Now this is where it gets weird. The secret world was supposed to have a top-down view of Tails behi behind Sonic on top of a checkerboard, spherical 3D plane with even tinier blue and red spheres lining the plane. The mission in these secret stages is to collect the all-blue spheres in order to get the Chaos Emeralds. Instead, we were taken to the Hyper Emerald Shrine. The shrine was only supposed to appear after you collected the first set of Chaos Emeralds, which makes sense, I guess. Sonic still had the first set of emeralds you were supposed to collect. Now, the shrine was its normal color scheme. Tall and dark pillars in the background that reflected bluish light from their sides. The platforms that were supposed to hold these seven Hyper Emeralds were bare except for the two on the higher platform on either side of the shrine. Knuckles and Tails stood in the center under the green and master emeralds as Sonic stood on the leftmost side, leftmost side of the shrine. Knuckles stared at Sonic as he did before, but Tails was facing away from Sonic and looking up at the empty platforms. Knuckles then turns to Tails for a few seconds before Tails decides to turn to face Knuckles in return. After a beat, Knuckles nods and then turns back to Sonic. Tails, after another beat, goes to Sonic. But instead of standing close, Tails had his back to Sonic and stood away from him at a distance. The cutscene ended, flashed white in the transition to the special stage with the spheres. We completed the stage, obtained one of the Hyper Emeralds, and came back to the Angel Island Zone. I, in I internally winced, not out of fear, but out of confusion and slight irritation. 
Tails and Sonic were now together throughout the run, but Tails was still cold towards Sonic. Tails never stood in close tandem with Sonic, and Tails would always face away from Sonic. Even when I tried to correct the position, Tails would just move himself back at a distance and keep his back turned to the blue hedgehog instead of facing him. An unsettling feeling poked at my stomach as I guided my friend through the level. It wasn't long before he came to the second secret ring location and jumped in. Again, we were taken to the shrine of the Hyper and Master Emerald where Knuckles stood waiting again. After a few seconds, Knuckles faces away from Sonic and Tails before turning to the right side of the screen. Seconds later, another sprite appeared from the corner of the screen. A female with blonde hair, dark brown fur, and blue boots. It took me a moment to uh, realize, but... After a moment it clicked that this was Princess Sally Acorn. I blinked a few times and looked again to be sure I wasn't seeing things. Sally didn't exist outside of the Archie comic book universe, and she hasn't been a blonde since issue 0 of the Sonic the Hedgehog series. Regardless though, she was inside the game and she looked like she had belonged there. Like the original makers of the game designed her sprite for the purpose of being a part of the game's story, and I mean everything from the hair all the way down to the knee high blue boots and her big blue eyes. The very convincing Sally sprite then came up to Knuckles and stood very close to him. Sonic stepped forward, but Sally turned away. Sonic then tried to run forward, but Knuckles blew him back with a punching animation. Tails did absolutely nothing for his bro, but watch as Sonic received Knuckles' blows. The scene ended again and put us back at the intended special stage. We finished it, got the emerald, and continued into Angel Island. Sally's supposed to be Sonic's love interest in the Archie comic book, so why was she with Knuckles? Is this supposed to be canon of the comics? But. Sally didn't have this color scheme when she met Knuckles in the story. My friend and I looked to each other as I felt a chill race down my spine. At this point, we're both wondering what the hell is going on. I remember the point of our hanging out and convinced him to shake off the occurrence. We came out to the first, uh, and run through the level and to eventually come across another special ring and jump into the special stage. We expect another weird cutscene with Knuckles and Sally, but it once again played normally. A remix music and green hints abound. The shrine was empty and prompted us to pick a Hyper Emerald to replace and sent us to the special stages. We cleared the stage and the correlating Hyper Emerald returned to its place on the platform. We continued through the zone till we got to the true game second cut scene. In the scene, one of Eggman's or Robotnik's, whatever you prefer, bot set the forest on fire. Instead, it was the Sally Sprite in the Eggman ship that came at the end of the level. Just as the fire from the ship launched itself to the, in order to burn the island, the black screen flashes with the words, Are you satisfied? in white text. The message in black screen disappeared and led us back to the cutscene. The fires that enveloped the screen burned a pixelated sickly green color and slowed to an almost rhythmic dance crawl before it froze. The music along with the game halted to one long monotone note for what felt like hours. The combination of the colors and the relenting notes set a feeling of sickness in my head and stomach that lasts as long as the sound buzzed throughout the apartment. The green fire slowly grew yellow in the center and continued to rouse my stomach until I gagged. Hey, is this supposed to happen? My friend asked. His restless excitement now replaced with concern and confusion. Before I could answer him, the game unfroze itself and continued with the cutscene currently in play. The flames poured down the screen and reveal Angel Island under pulsating green and yellow fire. A uh, still distant Tails and a standard disinterested Sonic stand waiting for us to continue the pursuit. Our friend takes the controller and continues. Without waiting for my reply, he continues straight ahead, asking me where the next special ring is. I debated the options in my head. Stop the game, and stop any more potential surprises from coming up, or keep this going and give him to the notorious plight of curiosity. It was loyalty that won out over every raging emotion within me instead of clear logic. We continued our special ring pursuit in impatient silence. I could feel the hair rising from my skin with each moment we progressed further and further into the stage. The green and yellow fires danced and waved in a way that made my head ache in the most worst of ways. My friend sat with great stillness and absolute reticence. As he navigated the stage and came upon the last ring we needed to become hypersonic. With little to no hesitation, he jumped into the oversized ring and the special stage commences. Another black screen pops up while writing, was it worth it? Was she worth it? The screen flashes back to the special stage. We receive several blue orbs and try to ignore the first as the second message overtakes the screen with a sudden flash in the walls. We retrieve another several orbs under the floors. We get the last orbs in the stage under Sonic and Tails' feet, and the back of the stage fades to a dark green and yellow tone. The Hyper Emerald came towards us and grew very large to the point where it envelops the entire screen, leaving just a running Sonic and Tails in a large green emerald graphic. The screen cuts to black before going to the score screen. The usual white screen containing the scores and emeralds was now green, and so the words uh, that were supposed to say you can now use Hypersonic 
and they were again replaced with The Mighty Will Fall. The screen cuts to black and, uh, and then cuts back to the shrine. The emeralds all appear and glow on their corresponding platforms. Below the emeralds is the blonde Sally sprite and a fallen Knuckles. Tails ran from Sonic's side and stands in front of Sally. Sonic, without any hesitation, spin dashed into Tails and threw him out onto the other side of the shrine. Sally backed away as Sonic prepared to spin dash into her before Knuckles gets up and deflects him. Knuckles goes to punch Sonic, but the screen cuts to black again. The screen then cuts back to the very beginning of Act 1 on Angel Island. What the hell is this? How did we get back to the beginning? I felt sick. The green and yellow colors were even heavier than before. My stomach churned and I just wanted to move on to the next zone as quick as possible. Just 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 go to just go to Hypersonic so we can move to Act 2, I say, cradling my head in my hands. I tell him what buttons to press, and then the chiptune remix changed to the standard music heard in the title screen as Sonic turned from blue, a shining white color. I Sigh in relief and watch as the double imaged hypersonic flies through the stage with absolute ease, but the elated feeling of relief changed quickly after mere seconds. Sally's image appears in front of Sonic like a ghost, and with a sudden tap of her sprite, Sonic loses his silver shine and flies backwards. His rings scatter across the stage like golden fireworks. The ring count on the upper left corner of the screen became zero, and the game's frame rate once again slows to a crawl. The black screen cuts ba black again just before Sonic touches the ground. You can't escape. The level resets once again, and we were back at the beginning of the level. The level is now nothing but undulating, sickly green and yellow tones. The enemies are still, there is no music, nothing but absolute silence, but honestly, I would have rather had that. I would rather have, you know, it remained like this for the rest of the game, to be honest. Sonic stood, still motionless, now looking down at the ground below him. Under him was not grass and dirt textures, but Sally. Never-ending rows of sleeping blonde Sallys lying in the ground and staring at the walls of the cave. Every time Sonic took a step, they stretched and bent their bodies and limbs as if in incredible agony. Each time Sonic jumped, they rolled and pulsed like the quivering sky. All their sleeping heads faced with blue hedgehogs. All the sprites tracked his every move and his every action. The black screen makes another appearance and taunts us. Here lies Princess Sally Anderson. Her royal majesty now sleeps in the most unconventional of graves. What the hell? My friend explain, exclaims. His hands now limp and shaking. Is this... Is this some type of joke? Who the hell is Sally Anderson? What the hell is going on? I shook my head and he looks to me, asking me the same question, even going so far as to shake me. I threw his arms off and crawled towards the Genesis. Wait, he shouts. What are you doing? I looked to him, my heart pounding, my hand shaking in a cold sweat. What the hell do you think I'm doing? I'm turning this shit off before it gets worse. He puts down the controller and takes my hands, practically pulling me away from the system. He looks at the screen, the Genesis, then back to me and shakes his head. As if I didn't understand him, he does so again, this time mouthing with an accompanying no. My eyes grow wide. You really want to go on with this? I know it sounds crazy, but I want to see where it goes. He looks back to the screen. This is our last night together, even if this is some messed up shit. I want to see how this thing ends. I just looked at him. In my mind, a question of loyalty was really worth all this. The feeling in the back of my head told me to stop. The sickness in the pit of my stomach was sick of negotiating and wanted some type of relief from this madness. In the end, though, it didn't matter. My friend picked up the controller once again and manipulated the lone Sonic to continue forward. The restless Sallys made the stage move in ways it was never intended to do. After a while, it seemed like they were reaching for him. The Sallys wanted Sonic, and it was not because he was missed or loved. My skin prickled in agony. I fought back the bile that was rising to my mouth. The sickening curiosity, this wanting to see how the story ends, was eating my health. We came to what should have been the end of the stage. In fear and curiosity, my friend and I watched as we came upon Knuckles and Tails, and other character sprites that should have, shouldn't have been in the game, to be honest. The Chaotix, Amy Rose, Cream and Cheese, all stood staring at the ground. When my friend had control again, he pushed Sonic forward. All the characters turned to Sonic. My friend pushes Sonic even further, passing the sprites in a slow, walking fashion. Each and every sprite follows Sonic. After the last sprite was passed, the black screen came again. She was mine, you said. The screen goes away and Sonic was alone again. The sky stood still. The Sallys were stagnant. Sonic has pushed down a long path. The blue hedgehog begins to gain speed and run down the path, continuing very quickly to nowhere. He ran for seconds, then minutes, and then those minutes turned into what felt like hours. Then Sonic is blown back again. As soon as he falls to the ground, the Sallys awake again and take him by the feet. The ghost Sally sprite stood before Sonic, just standing and staring. The Sallys from the ground pull Sonic into the ground. Sonic sprite begins to make an unfamiliar drowning animation. The ghost, the only standing Sally, walks up to Sonic. As soon as he touches him, the screen goes black again. 
in the walls. The shrine appears again, Sonic does a spin dash, Sally is in his path trying to escape him. Under the floors, he dashed through Sally as she flew backwards like tails. In the walls, Sonic attacks Sally again. Under the floors, she fell to the floor. In the walls, Sonic drags her away with another unfamiliar and strange animation. Under the floors. The Sallies from the ground finally get Sonic's sprite. Another unfamiliar animation of him dying plays over and over until the screen freezes. This time we wait and watch the screen. After a long beat of time, I sigh with relief and turn off the system. It's been a month since that whole ordeal happened. As soon as we turned off the game, I went to puke, took an Advil, and then went into the gaming forum that I'm a part of. My friend and I agreed that we would never play the game again until we were sure that we have the right copies of the game. We also agreed that we should post up a basic and not so detailed version of our experience on the gaming forum we were a part of as a warning to nostalgia lovers like ourselves. And no, we didn't include the creepy parts, we wanted the article to seem serious and not like some weird story. Recently, however, I got a reply from that very forum. It was one of the users from with those obnoxious usernames that are mixed with capitals and lowercase letters and random numbers that were supposed to form a certain type of word. I opened up the forum post and read the reply with a nat neutral feeling, if that's even possible. It was a standard reply, something like, wow, that sounds really weird, or whatever. The same user later sent me a friend request. I was suspicious at first, I checked his profile to see if he was a Sonic fan too, and actually made ROMs and certain hacked ROMs. I decided that it would be nice to have another Sonic the Hedgehog fan as a friend since my best friend was already overseas and suffering from his crappy internet connection. I added the annoying username to my friends and they instantly began to private message me. The long story uh, short of the message was that the user told me my experiences was a little strange if not coincidental because she once, or she or he, I don't know, had Sonic 2 and Sonic the Knuckle cartridges is that he or she and his or her friends hacked a long time ago. For the sake of conversation though, I prompted the user to tell me more about the story of the cartridges. Annoying username went on to tell me that the project was actually going to be a type of interactive fan fiction that included some of the Archie Sonic characters. The story was that Sonic would be framed and everyone else would band together with Knuckles in order to keep the Master Emerald out of the hand of Robotnik Eggman while Sonic tried to clear his name. For whatever reason, I responded and told this user the full details of the contents of the cartridges. I ended up buying, I then ensured them that this, although oddly similar, was definitely not their cartridges. Weirdly enough, the user just abruptly stopped replying after I told the story, and after a few moments of waiting, I figured they must have taken too long, and the user, wherever they may be in the world, had other things to do while they were waiting. It wasn't until another week had passed that I saw the user's reply. The user invited me to a chat room to talk. I logged into the room and waited. There were no other users except me and them. I typed in a few lines and waited. I waited longer and longer and even longer until minutes turned into an hour and my very cold toes began to retaliate via numbness. When I didn't get a reply, I began typing a message and said that I was about to leave until I received a very, very scary reply. You have my cartridges. You have my cartridges and I want them back. Give me your address. I can pick them up. The hairs on the back of my head neck stood erect, and a screaming voice in the back of my mind told me to leave the chat room at once and block the user as fast as I possibly could. I started to shake, not from cold, but fear. I struggled to find my mouse on my desk with out-of-control fingers. The user replied again. You weren't meant to see what you saw. My friends ended up taking those cartridges after we fell out and stopped the project. They must have hacked them behind my back before returning them. They weren't meant to be sold to the stores. I sold the wrong copies. Give me your address so I can swap copies. I have ones that aren't corrupt. I'll give them to you for free. The replies were rapid, almost as if the person typing the messages were in a state of rising panic. They got progressively more aggressive with each reply. Hello? Hello? Are you there? Hurry up and give me your address. Give it to me! GIVE ME YOUR FUCKING ADDRESS! I was frozen. I opened up a new tab and typed Sally Anderson into the search bar. I felt a color drain from every part of my body when I saw the results. In horror, I clicked on the first results and read the article over and over until the sentence burned into my mind. Sally Anderson is a registered missing person in the local papers. She hasn't been found for several years. The chat messages continue to ping loudly from the other tab. My body shook, my vision begins to blur from welling tears. I go back to the chat room and see the walls of reply by the user frantically leaving the same demand as before. 
I'm sorry for yelling. Seriously though, just give me your address. I can explain everything. Give me your address now. Give me your address. Where do you live? Tell me where you fucking live! I felt cold sweat trickle down my neck as I type in my reply, but now my whole body is filled with nerve to nerve with pure unadulterated fear. I struggle to perform the words, but the message manifests. Who is Sally Anderson? The user goes silent. The anticipation builds up inside me and left me a jittering nervous wreck. I typed the question again and again and again and again until it was my replies that painted the chat room walls. I stopped with my fingers, becoming numb, and I couldn't correctly spell any more words. I waited in silence, rocking back and forth for comfort in vain as the sun set and made my apartment dark and absolutely unbearable. After a while, only my computer screen light the cold darkness that surrounded me. I couldn't leave the chair. I couldn't leave my place. I watched and waited for the user to give me the answer. The ping of the chat room echoed in my mind. I looked to the bottom at the user's very short, very simple reply. Sally Anderson is mine. I take my mouse and struggle to back out of the chat, get back to my page, unfriend, and block the user to the point to where they can't even post replies on any of my open forum posts. I struggle to power down my computer only to fall out of my chair and knock my mug down with me. I reach my hand behind one of the legs on the desk and struggle for what feel like years to unplug my machine. I struggle to my feet, turn on all the lights and pace for a long time between the kitchen and the living room, repeating the phrase in my mind that has haunted my thoughts since the moment I saw it. The phrase echoed in my mind throughout the late night. It echoed into the early morning and into the afternoon. In the walls, I couldn't sleep. Under the floors, I can't sleep. So today, after another week of fucking insomnia-induced paranoia, I finally decide to plug my computer back in and try to contact my friend in Europe. I check my inbox to see many emails of the junk and important variety, except for one. The sender wasn't named, and the email was titled with the words, Found You. I studied it for several minutes before opening it, and I read the message out slowly. I found you. I know you live in those mediocre fucking apartments off of Anderson Street. I know you work at that sad fucking excuse of a printing shop off 3rd Street in May. I know you go to Pauline's Coffee at 6am before you go to work at 2pm and after you get off. I know you drink cappuccinos with heavy liquid creamer and extra sugar with three sticks of cinnamon. I know the car you drive is a blue 2000 Honda Civic with a large crack in the windshield. I know your plate number is AUK278 and that you have a little tails bobblehead on the dashboard. I know you graduated Thompson High School in 2011. I know where you go, when you go, what you do, and when you do it. No matter where you run, no matter where you hide, I'll be right there, right around the corner. And then you'll join her. You'll join her, and then you'll be mine too. My already exhausted body goes numb. My tired yet wired mind whirs and crackles like my computer before me. I feel the pins prickle at my body. I feel the sickness poke at the pit of my stomach once more as I remember the Sallies lying, moving, pulsing, and waving under the ground of the Angel Island Zone. I lock the door, grab a kitchen knife, call the cops, and after the call is finished, I go into my bedroom and shut the door. I sit on the floor in front of my bed where the two games that changed my life in all the wrong ways lie in a quiet, cold sleep. They lie sleeping. Sleeping as Sally does. In the walls. Under the floors. Well now, would you look at that, a good Sonic creepypasta. We have not had one of those in quite a long time. Now, good buildup, well paced, let me tell you that, let me, let me tell you that right now from the start. Very good buildup, and the pacing is a success. Now, it went far beyond the video game it even mentioned. Now, good mention again, I have to I have to, I have to bring up, is the screen caps that were shown throughout the story. Uh, you, you must have seen throughout the video if you were watching the video section of the uh, creepypasta. And again, this stuff helps overall when, you know, you try to image the story in your head. And I do have to mention that they were done really well. In fact, uh, they actually look like they were coming out from the real Genesis game. So, great touch there. Now, the acquisition of the game and every detail with the story felt normal and believable. And that adds to everything. You know, if one piece of it falls short, then the whole, uh, you know, house of cards, so to speak, crumbles. Now, one of the other things that I really liked was the mix of two protagonists, one that had no idea what was going on, and one that actually really did have an idea. It was a really nice contrast, really nice touch. You know, you had somebody that knew there was something wrong with the game, but you had somebody who was fresh to the experience, you know, and as, and as time went on, they themselves knew this wasn't what it was supposed to be. It was actually really messed up. Now, 
towards the end was interesting. You know, they, they, they brought this stalker, serial killer type individual. And initially I felt like, okay, this is haphazardly thrown in. But towards the end of the story, when you see that repeated dialogue, you know, and, and, and it starts to come full circle, it makes sense. You know, it starts to click, so to speak. Now, to have some fucked up serial killer in behind the shit honestly did feel pretty haphazardly thrown in, once again I mentioned, but as again it clicked, the premise it itself was interesting, you know, in reality, could it happen? I mean, sure, maybe some dude, it, it, maybe some fucked up individual like, like this exists, I mean, our world is huge, there's a ton of people out in the world, so I wouldn't put this past anyone. And honestly, it was done very cleverly, you know, for somebody to use a Sonic the Hedgehog 3 game, uh, you know, some serial killer to use this, spread around, the story inside it that would always repeat itself is really, really interesting, you know, it reminded me of movies like Creep, I guess you could say, to a certain extent. Now, overall, I really did like it. It was believable, it was technically feasible, and it built up and it was paced well. Uh, and from a technical standpoint, the whole story never had anything weird, you know, short coming out of it. It just, it felt like a real Genesis ROM hack, to be honest. You know, no weird sort of technical glitch to come up. And again, you know, some people are, you know, immune to that. They don't know much about it, but if you know about it, then it really, really kills a creepypasta experience. Overall, good story. I gotta give it, I gotta give it a hand there. Was not expecting it out of a Sonic creepypasta, and I am pleasantly surprised. That being said, I always ask, what would you rate this creepypasta? What would you change to make it better? And, uh, yeah, this is a pretty lengthy video as it is already. Um, that being said, this has been another episode of Haunted Gaming. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like it if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.